the Fawn Farsia, an extra underused mobile suit that's designed to overwhelm the enemy using its multitude of all range attack weapons, namely the physical Fawn Farsia bits and the entirely energy based remote weapon, its particle bits. The successor to the earlier Farsia, this unit omits the auxiliary propulsion base in favor of regular thrusters, allowing for optimal mobility in all terrain. Can the P Bandai HG1144 kit hold up to the sheer awesomeness of the Fawn Farsia in the show? Let's find out! The completed kit sports a fairly petite frame, as according to the official info, the Fawn Farsia stands at only 16.2 meters in height, which is below the 18 meter height standard of most mobile suits. The overall appearance of the Fawn Farsia, as seen here out of the box and straight built, is looking pretty good and the kit does a good job of representing the Fawn Farsia as seen on the show. The colors are mostly correct, needing only minimal painting at the backpack where the Farsia bits are deployed if you opt not to use the included stickers. Let's now proceed to the articulation of the kit. First, I'll be removing the backpack for it to be easier to show you the range of movement of the parts. The head can look down that far, and it can move side to side like so, and it could look up that far as well. And you can rotate the head 360 degrees like so, as it is connected via a ball joint to the chest. The arm is on a ball joint connection and you can move it around like so, but beware when raising the arm too high as the ball joint might pop off. As you can see, the movement of the arm is fairly limited due to the ball joint connection, but you can still perform the basics such as swinging the arms forwards and backwards, but it could really only move out this far forward before again popping off. The arm has articulation at this point, which allows you to move it 360 degrees like what you see here. The elbow only bends at one point and as a result, bends at around 90 degrees, which is rather disappointing but I guess sort of expected. The wrist is on a ball joint and can wriggle around and have some space for some movement. And the beam vulcans on the palm of the hands are also on a ball joint connection and has some articulation. Hip movement covers the basics as it is on a ball joint connection, so you can twist it 360 degrees no problem, and you can wiggle it around like so, however it's best not to overdo it as you might end up popping off the ball joint connection, like what you see here. The hips have a fairly good range of movement, able to move side to side, forwards, again I'm popping off, not too much, forwards and backwards this much, again not the most articulated but it does get the job done. The front skirts are connected to the body via ball joint connections and you can move them out of the way by spinning them like so. However, don't move them forwards too much as it may result in the front skirts popping off. There are no side or back skirts present for the Fawn Farsia. Moving on to the articulation of the legs, again they are mainly connected through a ball joint connection. So the Farsia won't be able to perform the full splits like most modern HGs. The movement of the upper thigh is limited due to the ball joint connection, however, the leg can move out forward very well. However, compared to the forward movements of the whole leg, moving it backwards only gives you this much. However, the absence of a back skirt gives you a lot more range of movement than you'd normally have. Moving the other leg forward, I will now demonstrate to you the knee movement or the knee bend, which is fairly good as you can see. It is on a double jointed connection and functions as is. The feet is connected to the leg via a ball joint and you're able to wiggle it around, um, move it all around like so. Um, you're able to move it side by side, forwards and backwards, no problem. 
In place of a back skirt, the Fawn Farsia has this tail, as with most if not all vegan mobile suits. You're able to detach the tail and it is made up of a single part and there's no articulation. The Fawn Farsia can use the tail as a melee weapon, particularly like a sword-like melee weapon for close combat action. The backpack has limited articulation as you can very slightly move them forwards and backwards. And there's also a side-to-side -side movement, although again not that much, as the head and the forward protrusions above the shoulders prevent it from moving further. The wings on the side of the backpacks are fixed in place and you're not able to move them. Having been based on an older kit, the articulation isn't exactly at its best when compared to today's high-grade kits, but isn't terrible overall. The elbow only bends at a 90 degree angle and the movement of the thigh and the legs as a whole are limited as it uses a ball joint connection. Despite these limitations, the Fawn Farsia can still pull off some amazing action poses. You'll just have to get creative when playing around with the kit and you might just find a way to get around the limited articulation and display the kit in a kick-ass action pose. With some minor painting and panel lining, you'll be able to enhance the Fawn Farsis overall appearance. The result will be a much better looking kit with much more depth in it. Major seam lines can be found at the middle of the backpack, at the top of the shoulder armors, and at the side of the legs. With some modification, you'll be able to smoothen them out and you will be rewarded with a more appealing appearance of the HG Fawn Farsia. The main weapon of the Fawn Farsia is its baton. In the anime, the Farsia can do a lot of things with this weapon. It can even generate a beam ribbon. I just wish that for this kit, we got some sort of a beam ribbon effect part, much like the HGFC Noble Gundam, but hence you only get the baton itself. Continuing with the accessories, we get 5 pieces of the Fawn Farsia bits. These bits are similar to the HG Farsias and are molded in with nice details. In fact, the top part of the baton is just an additional bit that's attached to the top of the rod. The bits can be displayed by placing them on the flexible effect part and attaching the effect parts to the pedestal holder that you can connect to the included stand. You only get three flexible effect parts so you can just cut them to any desired length in order for you to accommodate all the bits. Here is the Fawn Farsia displayed with its bits deployed. The beam effect part is very flexible and you can basically point them or arrange them in any way you like. They have no problems holding up the bits and they add an extra dynamic during posing. An extra set of manipulators include closed fists and new to this kit, we actually get a holding hand for when using the baton. For size comparison, here is the Fawn Farsia side by side with the HG RX-782 Gundam The Origin version. The RX-78 is like the standard height for most mobile suits, standing in at 80 meters and it does reflect that here in model kit form, compared with the Fawn Farsia's 60 meters. The designs also show a stark contrast as the RX-78 is as Gundam as a design as it gets while the Fawn Farsia has a sleek feminine form far from being your typical mecha design. And here is the Fawn Farsia with a bigger mobile suit side by side with the RG Sazabi. Standing at 25 meters, the Sazabi towers above the Fawn Farsia and not only exceeds it in height but by sheer bulk, given that the Sazabi is one of the more bigger and bulkier mobile suits. It's interesting to note that both kits are in the same scale, but it just shows just how much size can vary between mobile suit designs. The Fawn Farsia is a welcome new addition to the Gundam Age line of kits, and a long overdue one in my opinion. Articulation is a bit lacking in some areas, unlike with what we see with today's high grades with their awesome gimmicks and wide range of movements. Having said that, it's not entirely a deal breaker as you can still pull off some dynamic poses with the kit. You can work around the areas where it's lacking like the range of movement of the thighs and elbows and come up with some fantastic looking action poses so it's just a minor gripe for me. 
as the somewhat limited articulation stems from the fact that this kit is based on the older HG Farsia, a kit that's from 2012. I would have loved if they kept the parts for the pedestal from the original Farsia as it would have given the kit some extra playability and options during posings and displays, but I guess I may be asking for too much. I appreciate the inclusion of the flexible effect rods as it's always great when you're able to display the kit's mobile weapons. Personally, I'm always interested in the more unique looking mobile suit designs, so I quite enjoy the Fawn Farsia's overall appearance and proportions. While I prefer the original Farsia's color scheme with its deep pink and purple, the Fawn Farsia's lighter color still looks great and establishes itself as its own compared to the original. Having the Fawn Farsia baton is a fun way of posing the kit as it kinda makes the Fawn Farsia look more graceful as it looks more like an actual baton for exhibitions as much as it is a weapon. I hope you enjoyed this review and if you do, please hit the like button and support the channel by subscribing. I aim to continue doing reviews and unboxings of more Gunpla so don't forget to click the bell button after subscribing to stay updated on the latest uploads. Thank you and see you on the next one.